Hey yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we're gonna do a really yummy lower body stretch. So focusing on the hips, hamstrings, quads, um, as well as hip flexors and a little bit of low back. So this is great to do when you're feeling a little bit stiff and sore or if you're just trying to improve your lower body flexibility overall. We're gonna start lying down on our backs with the use of one block in supported bridge pose. So lowering all the way down you can bend your knees with your feet flat on the ground and just lift your hips up and shift the block on its lowest level underneath your hips. So right under the tailbone or underneath the pelvis here. And you're gonna pull your right knee in towards your chest and extend your left leg straight to the floor. So you should feel a pretty good stretch here at the front of your left thigh. And try to flex into that left foot, push down into the heel as you draw that right knee in. Soften your shoulders, soften the upper back. And I like to sway the right knee a little bit side to side. So this is a sequence I myself do all the time at home. And I figured I should just film it and share it with you guys because it is really great at building up flexibility. Keep that length. And then bending into your left knee, just hold on to the back of your right thigh and extend that right leg up to the sky. So my hamstrings are really tight today. I had a big workout, <laughs> big workout yesterday. So I have some stiffness. And then roll the ankle, flexing and pointing the toes. Especially if you wear heels, you might notice some tightness there. And let's release right foot down to the mat. Pull your left knee into your belly and extend your right leg straight. Flexing into that right foot, push into the heel. And just sway your left knee a little bit. Slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose. Feel the breath travel all the way down to your low belly and low back. And just notice how the hip flexors feel today. Where do you find the most tightness? And bending into your right knee, keep the foot flat on the mat, hold on to the back of your left hamstrings and extend that leg up. And just lightly pulling it in. So especially my left hamstrings are really, really tight today. So there's no need to go too far into this one. Just find wherever has the best kind of sensation for you. And then roll the ankle both directions. Flex and point your toes. One big breath here. And release, feet flat to the mat. Lift your hips, move the block off to the side. Draw your knees into your belly, but widen them towards the shoulders and armpits. And you can hold here or you can move into your happy baby pose, holding on either to the big toes with your peace fingers or to the soles of the feet. So your ankles are aligned over your knees, feet are flexed. Use your elbows to push your knees open a little bit wider. Dragging the knees down. Releasing the soles of the feet. You're just gonna rock up to take a seat. Bring the soles of your feet together to touch, knees apart, and bring your hips a little bit further away from your heels for this one here. So the knees are pretty much at a 90 degree angle. As you inhale, lift chin and chest up high. And on the exhale, move in and fold over the legs. Try to crawl your arms and fingertips out in front of you, lengthening out nice and long. Breathing deeply. And walk the fingertips back, lift head and shoulders back up. And this time, bring your feet in about three inches or so. Take an inhale, lift and lengthen up. Exhale, tilt forward and fold. Crawl out through the fingertips. Lengthen out through your arms, lengthen out through your spine. Big breath in here. And exhale, walk the fingers, lift back up. And one last time, see if you can get an extra three inches with the heels close in, pressing the knees down. 
inhale lift and lengthen exhale tilt forward you might not go quite as far down this third time perfectly normal but keep that length one big breath in and walk the hands in you're gonna bend into the knees cross at the ankles and we'll take downward facing dog so hands are shoulder width distance apart feet are about hip width distance apart or so and just paddle the feet so bending one knee and straightening the other leg curling your tailbone up to the sky do make sure your fingertips are spreading nice and wide we don't want all of our weight to be on our wrists. We want to be pushing into the fingertips and knuckles, taking some of the pressure out of there. And now lean onto your left leg, reach your right leg up to the sky, bend your right knee and open up that hip. So it's as if you're trying to get your right knee as high up as you can possibly get it, and your right heel is going over to the left, almost as if it was going to touch that left glute. Squeeze the glutes and lift that right knee up even higher. And let's find our lunge, right foot forward in between the palms to the top of the mat. Back knee can come down to the floor, lift up through the heart. Dropping the pelvis down. Keep your left hand down to the mat, reach your right arm to the back and maybe take your little quad stretch. So grabbing a hold of your left foot and pulling it in. So there are two ways of doing this quad stretch. The first is to keep your pelvis really low and work at bringing the heel in. The other thing that you, another option you might wanna try is that once you have a hold of that foot, you can also kick the foot into the hand and let that drag your right shoulder back. And it'll just change the area of the stretch really. Try to keep that big right toe pressing into the floor. And looking down to the mat, release the hold of that left foot down to the floor. Lift your back knee off the mat. And keeping your legs nice and wide, see if you can straighten your right leg and fold over your right thigh. Pushing into that back heel. So if the floor is too far away here, this is where having your block comes in really handy because you can just put it underneath your palms and work on this wider pyramid pose from here. Big breath in. And exhale, bend into that right knee, step it back, downward facing dog. And just notice if there is a difference in the second down dog. And we'll go and switch sides. Reach your left leg up to the sky, bend your left knee, open up that hip nice and wide, squeeze into the glutes. So try to send that left knee higher. Try to bring your left heel towards your right glute. Lift it up a little more and find your low lunge. So left foot to the top of the mat, back knee can come down to the floor, lift up through your heart. So my left knee is aligned directly over the top of my ankle letting the pelvis melt down and then grounding your right palm to the floor left arm reaches back bend into your right knee and catch a hold of that foot with your hand so taking your quad stretch so first option is to just let the hips keep them low and work at bringing your heel in a little bit closer another option you can play with is to kick the foot into that palm and let that drag your left shoulder back so there's a bit more of a back bend and you might feel it a little bit more into the hip flexors and a little bit more into the quads. This one is really different for everyone. Not everyone enjoys this variation. So you're welcome to just stick to the first one. Keep breathing. Looking down to the mat, release the hold of your back foot, tuck the back toes under to lift the back knee off the floor. And we're gonna straighten that left leg, ground the back heel and fold over your left thigh. So a wider version of this pyramid pose. <sighs> See if you can pull your right hip forward and press your left hip back. So we're not facing over towards the wide edge of our mat, we're really facing directly towards the top. Remember, you can always use your blocks here.
bending into your left knee step it back downward facing dog reach your right leg up to the sky bend your right knee open up your hip and let's find our lizard pose step your right foot to the outer edge of your right hand so in this lizard pose you can drop your back knee down to the floor you're gonna curl the right toes under roll to the outer edge of that right foot and see if you can come down onto your forearms or onto your block and you might even be able to come all the way down to the floor letting the hips and pelvis melt down to the mat take three big breaths here this is one of my all-time favorite poses to get really flexible hips and come back up onto the palms if you had lowered onto your forearms and you're going to toe heel your right foot all the way over to the left side of your mat coming into your pigeon pose so your right knee ends up being behind your right wrist try to square your hips to the front of the mat if this back hip is up nice and high you're going to want to put a block underneath your right hip it'll make the pose a lot easier otherwise you can fold down either staying up on your forearms or coming down and letting your head rest to the mat five breaths here let's come back up downward facing dog tuck the back toes under reach your right leg back push into the feet notice if your heels maybe are a little bit closer and let's go repeat to the other side left leg rises bend your knee open up your hip nice and wide lizard pose to the left left foot to the outer edge of your right hand so at first the knee and the toes are pointing forward and then you can let your back knee come down to the mat and I'm actually just going to fold up my mat here make it making it a little bit more comfortable and you can curl your left toes under roll to the outer edge of your left foot so you're pushing that left knee open and then you can come down finding your edge in this pose maybe to the forearms maybe to the floor and you can always come onto a block as well three big breaths try to let go of any tension in the shoulders and the upper back and the arms and lifting on up back onto the hands we're gonna make our way into pigeon pose so you can toe heel that left foot over to the right side of your mat you want your left knee to be behind your left wrist right leg is extending back behind you maybe propped up onto a block if you'd like or you can fold on down so squaring off your hips making sure you're not rolling to one side more than the other and that you're keeping some weight into that right hip not all to the left one more breath here on this side and we'll be coming into our last downward facing dog so curling the toes under unrolling the mat if that's what you had done and just notice how this down dog feels as opposed to the first one that you did 
You might be able to get your heels closer to the floor. And we'll come down onto our backs. So crossing at the ankles and lowering down. Before closing this practice, we'll take one final pose, coming into reclined shoelace. So lifting the legs off the mat, you're gonna cross your right thigh over the left one, and you might just use your hands to pull the knees in towards the belly. If it's accessible, catch a hold of the feet instead. So you're trying to widen the heels further away from the glutes while also pulling them down. You can kind of play around with your grasp here. But you're looking for a sensation through the outer hips. Flexing the feet to protect the knees. And release, uncross, and switch the cross of the legs. So left thigh is on top, same thing any option with the arms that works for you. And release, uncross into Shavasana. Taking up some space with the arms and the legs. Take a moment here to tune in to the lower body. Notice how the legs feel and even the joints into the ankles, the knees, into the pelvis, the low back. And invite it all to relax and settle. Begin to breathe a little bit deeper, wiggling fingers and toes. Take a big stretch with your arms up overhead. And we'll roll to one side. Come on up and take a seat. Sitting up nice and tall. Bring your hands together at the front of the heart. Take a moment here for yourself, acknowledging your practice. Bowing forward, namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this quick lower body stretch with me. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos quite frequently here on YouTube, and I would love for you to also like this video and leave me a comment. Let me know how it went for you. Thank you all so much, and I hope to practice again with you soon.